Welcome to this Answers How To series video. In this video, we will learn how to set up a simulation to analyze the aerodynamics of a Formula SA car using Answers Fluent. We will start from a mesh file and go through all the steps that are needed to set up the simulation, such as setting up the boundary conditions, selecting the turbulence model, and selecting the right solver for your simulation. So let's get started. This is the computational domain that we will be using in this example. As the car moves through the air, our working fluid in this simulation will be air. In the real world, the car is moving at 20 meters per second. However, in our simulation, the car would remain stationary and everything else will move relative to it. The air would come in through this phase at 20 meters per second and leave the domain through this phase. These surfaces represent the walls of our hypothetical wind tunnel and thus will be modeled as slip walls since the effect of shear stresses can be considered negligible along these walls. This surface lies along the symmetry plane and thus will be modeled using the symmetry boundary condition. The ground in our simulation will be moving at 20 meters per second relative to the car and thus will be modeled as a moving wall. Similarly, the wheels of the car rotate as the car moves forward and thus we will be modeling them as rotating walls having a speed of about 87 radians per second which is obtained by dividing the inlet speed by the wheel radius. All the remaining surfaces of the car will be modeled as no slip walls. For this simulation, the pseudo transient formulation of the pressure based couple solver would be used. Let us begin by quickly checking the mesh. As you can see, the mesh check is complete without any errors. Next, we will evaluate the mesh quality. The orthogonal quality for this mesh is greater than the recommended minimum threshold of 0.1, confirming that it is of good quality. Now let's go to the physics tab where we will set up the physics for the simulation. We will retain the defaults in the general settings as we will be performing a steady state simulation using the pressure based solver. Open the operating conditions. We can see that the operating pressure is set to the atmospheric pressure. Next, we need to update the reference values which will be used to calculate the pressure coefficients. Click on reference values and type 20 meters per second as velocity. Now in the case of external aerodynamics of cars, the reference area corresponds to the area facing the flow or the frontal area. To calculate this, let's switch to the results tab and click on projected areas. Select X as the direction of projection as it is the direction of the flow and in the list of surfaces, select all the surfaces that correspond to the car. An important parameter in this calculation is the minimum feature size. You can try reducing this value to find out when the projected surface area begins to converge towards a particular value. In our case, using a minimum feature size of 0.001 or smaller, the frontal area converges towards 0.5 meters squared. Copy this area from the console and paste it into the reference area field. Now let's switch back to the physics tab. Open the viscous model dialog box to set up the turbulence model. The Reynolds number based on the car length is about 4 million. So we will assume the flow to be fully turbulent and therefore we'll use K omega SST model for this simulation. Let's also go ahead and activate 
a curvature correction option to take into account the streamlined curvature and system rotation. You can find more information about different models and their settings in the help section. Click on create edit button under materials to edit the materials for this simulation. Since the flow in this simulation is expected to be incompressible, we will be using constant density. So let's stick with the default material properties of air as shown here. Clicking on the cell zones will open the cell zones conditions panel. We can see that the air is assigned here as the default material. Now click on boundaries to open the boundary conditions panel. Let us group the boundary conditions by zone type. This can prove helpful when you're dealing with fluid flow problems with many boundaries. Set the inlet velocity magnitude to 20 meters per second. The turbulence intensity at the inlets of wind tunnels is usually very low and therefore we will set the turbulent intensity at 0.5% and turbulent viscosity ratio at 2%. Make sure that the outlet is set to zero gauge pressure because the outlet is exposed to the atmosphere and keep the same turbulence quantities for outlet in the case of any reversed flow. For the back field, activate the rotational moving wall and input a rotational axis origin as shown on the screen. These values were obtained from space claimed during the geometry preparation stage. Set a rotational speed of 87.489 radians per second. The axis of rotation is in the positive Z direction according to the right hand rule. Now repeat the steps for the front wheel as well and input the rotation axis origin as shown on the screen. Make sure that chassis, front wing, rear wing and rods are all set to no slip stationary walls. Set the ground as a moving wall with a 20 meters per second translational speed as it will be moving with respect to the car. Set the tunnel walls as zero specified shear to simulate a free slip wall. Repeat this step for wheel radii. Let's switch to the solutions tab and click on solution methods to set up the numerical solver. Make sure that the spatial discretization scheme for turbulent kinetic energy and specific dissipation rate is set to second order upwind. Click on controls to access the under relaxation factors. For this simulation, we will use the default values. You can set the convergence condition using the residual monitors as shown. We'll use the default values for this simulation. Next, we will set up a drag monitor for the entire car. In the drag report definition box, change the name to CD-car. Make sure that the force vector is aligned with the flow direction.
select the wall zones associated with the car as shown and enable report plot and print to console options. Similarly, repeat the steps to create a monitor for the lift coefficient. You can add more report definitions depending on the goal of your simulation. Click on initialize to initialize the solution. Next, we will use the quick search feature of Fluent to perform FMG initialization. Type FMG as shown here and select the first command under TUI. In the console, hit enter and type yes and hit enter again. This will begin the FMG initialization. FMG is generally used to initialize complex flows. A better initial solution helps accelerate simulation convergence. Set the number of iterations to 600 and hit calculate to run the simulation. We can see that both the global residuals and the monitored quantities are oscillating. This is due to vortex shedding caused by the interaction of the car and the air. As this is an inherently unsteady flow problem, this behavior of the solution is expected. The plots of CD and CL seem to have stabilized past 300 iterations and oscillate around an average value. We can take the data output file to Excel. In Workbench, click View and toggle on Files. Here we can find the location of the files. The output files can be opened in Excel for further processing. The results can be clipped and we can estimate averages, root mean squares and so on. Both values are in an acceptable range for this car model and we can conclude that the simulation has reached an acceptable convergence for the steady state analysis. So to summarize, in this video, we set up a simulation for analyzing the external aerodynamics of a Formula SAE car. We performed mesh checks to ensure that our mesh is of good quality. Then we assign material to the domain and set up the correct boundary condition of our flow problem. Lastly, we set up the numerical solver for the problem and added a solution monitor to help us keep track of the drag on the vehicle as the simulation progresses. This monitor also helped us to understand if we reached a reasonable convergence for the steady state analysis of this inherently unsteady problem. Keep these tips in your mind when setting up your fluid dynamic simulation. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe. To find more information about Ansys Fluent or other topics, check out our channel for more how-to videos and visit ansys.com courses today.